You're listening to the Impact Implosion on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. January 17th, 2014, 2015, and it is another episode of the Impact Implosion. As always, I am Seth Drake, and on the other end of the, this tin cannon string is Mike Poland. Hello, everybody. <sighs> Impact. Well, yep. first we had some news. News. Not- news. Uh, first of all, we had Rosie Lots of Love wanting to make a crack. she any better than she was last time? I don't know, but she's lost weight. That's I have seen those pictures. Yeah, somebody posted them online somewhere. Yeah, but if she's got the only yeah, as everyone said, if she hasn't gotten any better, no. And also, current champion TNA World Champion Bobby Lashley suffered an injury, and he oh, is no. off the Bellator 134 card. Crap. The nature of this injury is unknown. Uh oh, that's not good. Yep. So you saw Victory Road. <laughs> Turning point. Turning point. Gosh darn it. <laughs> yes, Keep I call- did. Keep calling yeah, it something I- else. <laughs> yeah, Victory Road was the month, the last, the December one. Okay. Yeah. Um. Anyway, yes, we started with Samoa Joe and Kenny King, which was a good little eight-minute match with uh, Joe winning after King, like he avoided the Muscle Buster a couple of times. But then, like, the third time, Joe gets it and wins the match. We have a knockouts video package with uh, Gail, Kim, Madison, Ray, and Angelina Love chronicling all three of them. We have a good knockouts match with Gail, Kim, Madison, Ray, and Angelina Love, where basically, like, everybody got chances to face each other one-on-one during the match until Gail, Kim got the, the win on Madison with eight defeat. Or actually, no, it was Angelina with eight defeat. We had Austin Aries and Sonata in a very good match on the show with uh, Sonata getting the win after James Storm who had been thrown out of the match earlier in the show or earlier in, in the, at the beginning of the match um, interfered and Sonata got the win. We then we had then we kind of dipped down a little bit. We have EC3 and Spud against Gunner and Mr. Anderson. With Gunner and Mr. Anderson getting the win after EC3 walks out on Spud, which was kind of, this was kind of at the beginning stages of the split between them, because this was taped back in September? Yeah, I kind of guessed that with uh, Kenny King and Samoa Joe facing each other. Yep. And then we had uh, Eric Young and Magnus, which was okay. Crap. Crowds seem to die down after Aries and Sonata, though, so you had three hot matches, and then the next three matches following are kind of just blah, crowd-wise, because then you have Bram and Abyss in Monster's Ball, with Bram winning with a roll-up using the ropes. And then we had uh, Rude and Storm, which was good, and Rude gets the win with the Rude Bomb after Brock, Brock blocking the uh, super kick, the last call. And then our main event is Jeff Hardy and MVP, which is an odd main event, but only because it feels like it would have been a SmackDown main event back in, like, 2008. Yeah, I don't get why that was the main event. Because they couldn't get Lashley. Yeah. Lashley had to work Bellator that weekend. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well. Jeff Hardy gets the win, and I believe the final of these one-night-onlys is next month with Rivals, which could turn out to be uh, TNA's last pay-per-view for a while. Even though Dixie is saying otherwise. Yeah. I don't know if I should take her word for it, though. Oh, uh, of course not. Because <laughs> if I'm TNA, I'd wait until I get all this TV stuff established and then do pay-per-views. 
focus a little more on the TV product right now. That is true. Um, yeah. So we had Impact uh, on Friday now because it is – that's their new time. Yep. And we first had MVP coming out with new music and, uh, with the, uh, his crew. Yep. And he says he's a genius. He has surrounded himself with people who have an appetite for success. He called Samojo and Loki his family and they have had highs and lows together. It's well, interesting of- that they're his family despite the fact that other than here, there's been real new, even if they did work together on the Indies, there's really no way anybody could have seen that. Yeah, and uh, by the fact, Smojo was wanting to kill Kent MVP a few months ago. Yes, that too. So, and they are now Nobody called... Nobody fights like family. Yep. <laughs> they are now called the Beatdown Club, the BDC, and the Beatdown Club ain't nothing to mess Messed with. with. Yeah, because yes. they can't say the actual yes. lyrics. and that made that whole promo seem, that whole part of the promo seem awkward. Yeah, and he wants and then to... They sh- bring, and even more awkward, we have Eric Young coming out now. Yep, and Eric's like, and the fans are like, you sold out. No one, your opinion does not matter. A month you ago, know? I want to kill this guy. Well, actually, could... that would have been like three months ago, but, you know. Yep, but I respect him now. Because he did something for his family. Well, yep. Every P took something away from a brother of his, and when he was champ, well, actually, no, he gave a brother of his the title. Mm-hmm. And he respects that for some reason. Yeah. So, so because of course uh, he he was the one who actually got the title from in the first place. Yeah. That and makes he sense. said, and he said, "Hey, when I was champion, I took care of Rude first. I gave you your title shot, and I beat you. But when you were champion, you didn't return the favor. Even though he kind of couldn't do it for the most part, but uh, I do understand that first week he uh, could have because he gave MVP a title shot. Right. People were like, "Wait, uh, why did he?" Do-? I'm like, "He did give MVP a title shot. He could have given it to Eric Young, but..." They wanted to screw with MVP and Lashley, so... Right. And then Rude, speaking of Lashley... Well, oh. when Rude... No, he says that when Rude won... Well, actually, when he was in the hospital, because he defended Rude, all he got was a text message. Him. Seems to be every heel turn excuse ever. You didn't call me! You didn't call me, you didn't come see me, and... Now hey, I took dude, care of what you cared for the most. So, MVP then introduces Bobby Lashley. Lashley doesn't come out. Tries to do his m- music again, but Kurt Angle comes out. I'm gonna make all you tap. And Samoa Joe's like, oh, you're gonna make me tap, huh? You're gonna make me tap. <laughs> <laughs> Going all gangster on him. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, p- Kurt punches Joe. Then they try to go after each other, but security guards are here to break it up. Holy crap, the security actually making himself useful for once and showing up on time. Yep, and Kurt tells Joe, you want to fight? You'll get it. And right now! And I'm like, wait, aren't you no longer the authority figure here? How are you booking matches? Because they have no authority figure. Anyone can book a match. Yeah, I guess so, but... I'm sure eventually we'll see Dixie come back anyway. Oh, God. So, we joined the match in progress. Yes. Because, yes, we didn't see the beginning of it. There were commercial breaks. Yes. So, anyways, Samoa Joe is getting beat up. Well, actually, Kurt has him in the ankle lock. Joe tries to break it several times, get out of it several times, cannot. Then he finally gets it and pull, gets throws uh, Kurt into the ref. Ref is uh, a little stunned for a bit. Kurt uh, gets a low blow. Um, Joe hits Kurt with a low blow, locks him in the Kikina clutch, and Kurt taps out. Yep. Actually, I have notes on this. I believe let me get to those notes. Because, yeah, I actually did notes on this show. Because it wasn't like TNA. Ah, dang it. I had them. Mm. Okay, um... 
Hey, oh yeah, and Taz definitely did talk a big plot hole about why Joe joins MVP. But, you know, they were fighting each other, like, long ago, and I'm like, and Josh does his best to cover. Yes. And apparently during the match, we saw went into Lashley's dressing room, and he ain't there. Yeah, we did that one other, t- we did that during Rude and Young later, too. We saw Lashley a lot arrive and do a, p- say, I'm not talking to anybody. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. We'll get to that, though. And here comes Rude to make the save because the beatdown club's beating up him after the match. Beating a bangle. Yep. Because he's got a chair. And then we come back from it with Rude sitting on the chair. And he says, everything to come out of Eric Young's mouth was a bunch of bullshit. This ring is my home, and I live for wrestling. But tonight is about payback, and I am going to make Eric Young pay. Uh huh. And with the new set, by the way, we forgot to mention the new setup for TNA, by the way. Which we saw throughout the show anyway. Yeah, we forgot to mention that at the opening of the show. We, they actually do admit that they're doing this from a studio. In Nashville somewhere. Yeah, TNA HQ's in Nashville, yeah. So yeah, they're actually at an announcer's booth in Nashville do, running the show. So it has a live wire feel to it, but, you know, it's not that bad. We'll mm-hmm. get we'll get to overall opinion. As long about as Paul Heyman doesn't call in. Yep, JB swears revenge on EC3. Yep, he's an he's an insane jackass. Yep. He so then we get a really good match between the Hardys and the Wolves with the Revolution in the crowd so on in the balcony. Yes, apparently the Revolution have reserved seating in the old balcony to watch this number one contenders match. The winners will get a title shot in I think two weeks. Which is kind of funny since the Hardys already won a number one contendership match. Right. So they already had the number one contendership. I don't know why this. Um, because I think the Wolves were the tag champions at the time that they won the belts. Maybe. Were the Wolves were, were they won the number one contendership? But it still counts. Yeah. You win a number one contendership, it still counts. It doesn't make the this whole thing. TNA play. logic. They they give people a bunch of title contenderships and then they never get the shots. I know. Yeah. Apparently the revolution also demanded a special spotlight be on them while they're watching the match. <laughs> Should have had James Storm cut a promo during the match, just all the way during the match. Oh yeah. So TNA uh, Josh and Taz were arguing over if the Hardys or the Wolves were the greatest tag team of all time. And I was like, guys, the greatest tag team of all time is not in TNA. Stop trying to say otherwise. And where is it? Uh, They're mostly retired. Uh, Yes. Or Or one of the members is dead. Road Warriors. Yeah. So anyway, they do a... Spot where Jeff Hardy runs on the top, on the ropes, the top rope, and everyone's like, they've never seen something like that before, and someone mentioned, they've seen that from Elix Skipper. (laughs) Except he was doing it off the top of a cage. He did, he did that off the top of a cage, and he did that off the top ropes. He did that (laughs) forever. Yeah, he did that, yeah, the walk ropes into the Frankenstein, yeah. Yeah, he did the running ropes into Nobody the Nobody remembers Elix Skipper. That was too long ago. Yep. So the Hardy Boys win. They're number one contenders again. And then we have Feast or Fired is next week, which they mentioned. And Bram's thoughts about it are basically, I'm going to feast. I'm thinking two of the three British guys that are in there will get the uh, get title cases because they're going to Britain in a couple weeks. For the tapings. Oh yeah. Spud might get X Division and Magnus or Bram will get either either a tag team or a title shot case. Okay. Um and he says, I'm definitely not getting fired. <laughs> it suddenly sounds like James Storm is there British. Oh no, yeah. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> so EC three and Tyrus take over the control broom. And tell the cameraman to take it to Jeremy Borash, and you can hear Borash listening to something that's not EC3 talking. Well, 
EC3 is Keith, talking. Keith, if you want to keep your, keep your job, you will t- you will, you will put the camera on Jeremy Borash. Yep, and he's like, you have something to say to me? You say, I'll show you otherwise. Uh, next week, you fight, and I you have 30 minutes to make that decision. Yay. So we'll show why that's funny. Um, Then we had a no DQ match, which was okay between Rude and Young, but here's the problem with that. We've seen these two do way better, better matches. <clears throat> yeah, they had a much better one before, like a few weeks before Rude had the first match with Lashley. Yeah. And the big problem, the, the only good spot here is that Eric was able to win clean because he, um, did a pile driver onto the chair, which, damn. And Rude bounced. Yeah. So, damn. <laughs> anyway, MVP comes out and says, we'll definitely have Bobby Lashley here tonight. Yeah, and they're like, what side is he on? Rude, you're going to have to go to the hospital, but maybe you'll get lucky and have a visitor. Unlike when you, Eric did, unlike when Eric was in the hospital. Hmm. So then we had a garbage knockouts tag title match. I skipped this. Brooke Tessmacher and Taryn Terrell versus the beautiful people. Only thing <laughs> I saw on this was Kong and Havoc at the end. By the way, the the best part about there was another part about the air there was this graphic for Rude and Eric Young that had Eric Young posing and Rude about to dive in that <laughs> looks like he's about to jump Eric Young. <laughs> The match is starting early. Yeah, so I'm like, great graphic, guys. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Lashley finally decided to show up, and he has no time to speak to the nosy cameraman. I'll do all my talking in a little bit. And we have the X Division title match. Oh, and I forgot one more thing. Jeremy, Bo- I mean, not not Jeremy Borsch, uh, Josh Matthews called Raking the Eyes to Get Out of the Rude Bomb Demented. And I am like, no, that is smart. It's called a counter in there, Josh. Yes, it is called a counter. It is no DQ, so EY went, like I said, EY wins with the pile drive on the chair. He takes his love lessons from Coco Beware. Well, even in a, even in a match where it's DQ, you can eye gouge someone. I don't think you get DQ I, for that. I know, but pile driver! Yes, the Coco reference. We have the EC3 Borash set up for their match next week. Yeah, and, and so here's the funny thing about the... We had an X Division title rematch tonight, which is why this was the first time I am hearing about this tonight. Hmm. By the way, and, back to the Lockouts title match, we have Brooke had new music. Uh, Brooke's first match back, she eats the pin. Oopsie, well, I mean... Taryn's a champion, so you can't have her take the ball. Yeah, but you can have the beautiful people. Bad lose. booking. So the lights go out, Awesome Kong appears and beats up the beautiful people and DJZ, who decides to come in and to talk to her. Uh, <laughs> she does, she's not in the mood for talking to her, DJ. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Then Havoc walks out and gets in her face, and officials have to separate him. They're, so this stare- ha- they're staring at each other. So EC3 does turn down. Uh, JB originally turns down EC3's challenge because he's not a wrestler. Nobody so, back here respects you. EC3 bullies him into accepting it, yeah. and a commercial of Destination America hump, hyping up Feast or Fired. That is a novel concept of a channel hyping TNA. Yes. We also had a commercial for Tax Slayer, which I cannot wait for him to face his arch nemesis. Erwin R. Scheister. <laughs> that would be a tax cheater. <laughs> yep. Koya is finally announced as the newest member of the dis- newest disciple of the revolution. Koya means lost? Lost. Lost in Hindu, yeah. Okay. And thanks to Manic. Oh, let's hope they team them up. So, by the way, because I said that was such a novel concept for a channel to be hyping TNA, I got a raging tweet by a fan who said, yeah, go back to watching WWE, Mark. 
You, you um, except it. for the fact that Spike never got hyped TNA. That's why they're not on uh, that. Yeah. No, that I'm tr- I'm trying to get the whole email. He basically says you're a WWE fan and go eat Adam Rose's dick. Ugh. Well, go suck on it, whatever. And basically, I had to block this guy because if you're not civil with me in a debate, if you try using insults like not like cursing and stuff, I will block you. Mm-hmm. And realize called me a WWE fan. I haven't watched Raw in months. I haven't watched most of the WWE stuff in months, other than NXT. So, nice one. Mm. Good try, fine guy. And like you said, I was making fun of Spike TV, not TNA. Of course, these are the TNA fans that probably don't get that we're making fun of Spike TV. Yeah, we're making fun of Spike here. Of Spike. Which you guys should be doing too. Yeah. So, so we say, got, they should be they should be back on Spike. More people will see it. Yeah, but they don't promote it, so that's why the ratings were always in the tank. Yeah, Spike never really cared. Spike's never cared about wrestling, even when WWE was there. Right. They maybe cared a little more, but yeah, because they were there when the product was hot. Yeah, X Division Championship match: Low Key versus Aries. This was a rematch of last week. Loki had a new heel music and was flocked by the Beatdown Clan. His new music was MVP's music. Oh, it was? So it yeah. Was They're all using the same music. Thing. So, thanks to interference, Loki retains the belt. So what was the point of Ares winning it last week other than the title change? I don't know. Especially if you were just going to form a new group anyway, you should have had Loki win. And Josh Matthews still must have been stuck on WWE mode because he said the BDC was trending on Twitter, even though it wasn't. Uh, I think probably Dixie's telling him to mention Twitter, too, so, you know. Anyway, this is the segment with Lashley, isn't it? Next, yeah. Um, MVP with the Jets insults. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you could have made it this, you could have dissed the Knicks, Giants, or, and Mets, too. <laughs> Why are you yeah, insulting just the Jets? And the Yankees. Yeah, the Yankees too. <laughs> so, Lashley comes out, and he's speaking. Oh, oh God. Shit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell says... That belt does success- not belong to you. We're a successful group of individuals. Well, MVP said we're a successful group of individuals. I made you world champion, so the world champion belongs to all of us. And Lash is like, no, it this, only belongs to me. This belt does not belong to Loki, Samoa Joe, Eric Young, and Kenny King, or you, Hassan. Or wait, that was later. Yeah, he, MVP by his loyal name. Yeah, his real, real, it's Muslim name. And MVP's like, well, actually, yeah. that, that's my government name. And I'm like. Well, sort of, sort of, because your re- real name was before you converted to Islam was Alvin Burke Jr. But you converted while in prison and changed it to Hassan ha- Hamid Assad. And don't worry, anti-Islamic people, MVP has since turned into an atheist. <laughs> so before you racists get on him for that one. In any but- event. Yeah, and he's like, so Lashley tries to leave. Let's not end it this way. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, let's not end this way. This isn't about this whole beatdown cl- club. And Lashley tells him to let go if he is smart, and M- o- MVP's like, okay. Then he says, you know, we don't want to leave this way. Let's end peacefully. He hugs him. Lashley tries to pull let go, but MVP keeps on him and kisses Lashley in the cheek. And the BDC beats him up. Oh, so now it's a mafia. That's what we need. Yep, the kiss of death. <laughs> and everyone takes their shots at him and leaves him laying. And MVP orders him to sand Lashley up. And says, it's Lashley's title, but hits him in the face with it and says, but it is our title too. This title belongs to us. No, it doesn't. So they steal it. And that's how the show ends. 
And next week is Feast or Fire. Yep. Um, I give this show a C plus. Yeah. Some bad booking here, and just you mean you, you had a good Harry's Wolves and Rude Young matches, but yeah, Aries, Aries Key was was good until the finish. Which why the hell do you give Aries the belt to begin with if you're going to do that? Yeah. Um, Eric Young and Rude was disappointing. Right. Knockouts was garbage, sadly. And, but as far as the um the production goes. I actually kind of like it. Yep, production is good. It's different, and it's not like you're you did well with uh, being there to begin with. Right. So you might as well just do it from there. So that is that is the impact show. And uh, what do you what did what did you think? I think it's a C plus show. It's always okay. Could have been much better. Huh? Sure. You had some right. Hello? And I think that's all. That's what I think. Okay. Um. By the way, um, do you have anything to sell while we have people in the background talking? Oh yes. Um, what I have to sell is IWE coming back February sixth to Brewer, featuring the crowning of a new champion, as it will be Scott Wilde taking on the winner of the King of New England Battle Royal for the vacant title. Plus, Johnny Primer and the returning Silent Graves take on Joey Primer and Crash Landing. And IWE returns to Island Falls on February 20th, featuring two out of three falls with Sonny Roselli against Tomahawk and Ro- uh, Mean Mark Mahoney against er- the da- Hey Man, Eric Johnson. And that's all so, I've got. So, wait, um, Silent Rage is there? Silent Graves. Oh, not... Mind. Oh, okay. I was like... Silent Rage. <laughs> I was about to look at you like, what? No. <laughs> he sucks. Well, then. <laughs> anyway, hey. um, on the website, I had talked about my top 10, top 25 favorite movies of the year, and my top 10 least favorite movies of the year. Yeah. And... Number one on both was Birdman for favorite, and uh, least favorite was something called Mr. Jones. Not the song by the Accounting Crows. No. <laughs> no, it is a horror movie that really has is boring. And has mm. no payoff. Has zero payoff. Yes. So, after all of that, Miley, we are going for a walk. And we will talk to you on Friday night. See ya. Bye.